So in 2018, in the run-up to the breast implant hearings of 2019, um, we were trying to um, kind of wrap our heads around what is all the um, meaning uh, through just the social media environment was, it was becoming more and more prominent with what I just told you. I, I would see these patients come in and they'd have complaints and they'd be pretty um, varied complaints. There'd be problems with memory loss, term to brain fog. There'd be problems with fatigue, a lot of chronic inflammatory symptoms, uh, a lot of problems with uh, digestion, uh, pain in muscles and joints. And sometimes they'd have shortness of breath and palpitations. And it was a really broad number of symptoms. In those instances where we have a hip implant, a knee implant, a breast implant, a cardiac implant, all whatever, whatever the implant is, the bacteria that's in the bloodstream can actually get attached to the implant and stick to it. And it's very hard for our immune system then to take care of this bacterial contamination. And many of them produce uh, material that makes it harder and harder for the immune system to take care of it. And they form a biofilm. So these are like communities of bacteria. So Last year, we published a paper that showed in 600 explant scar tissue specimens from patients, 29% had bacterial contaminants. We get exposed to different things environmentally, et cetera. And so the, the, the thing for us, when I think about, you know, the bacterial contamination and what can it do, the, the latest research shows that interaction between the bacteria and the fatty acids in the breast can lead to development of something called oxylipin 10 So think of it as something that stimulates the immune system. And then that can be responsible for those symptoms I listed. Things like mm. brain fog or things like fatigue or things like joint pain and muscle pain. So that's probably the best scientific, you know, explanation currently.